Uh, I get paid to speak, so you know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to make sure y'all, I want your invited, undivided attention for like maybe 20 minutes at the most, depending on how y'all want to get down. But if you can just focus on me, like everything that you're doing. I'm the type of person, though, that likes to be doing two things at once to make sure that my mind is listening. But I'm going to ask you to just practice with me for a second to just focus. So I'm going to take you into a kind of a little bit of a breathing exercise to kind of like make you feel a little bit more comfortable. So everyone take a huge deep breath in with me. Exhale. Breathing deep up here. And I won't keep going because I know it's going to be over here. All right, another deep breath all together. Exhale. All right. All right, focus, 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 okay? My name is Vanna Lewis, and I'm a Native American. I'm going to stop talking if y'all are going to talk, because if I'm not as important as you, then we want to make sure that we're all important in here, okay? So um, my name is Vanna Lewis, and I'm from the south side of Tucson, Arizona. I grew up in the south side. In other words, I grew up hearing gunshots every night, sirens, uh, screams for help, um, all of this stuff, right? Okay, I see you like your part of All right, so, and I'm also a Native American of the Ana Atom. Okay, does everyone know what Ghana Atom is? Okay, so those are the indigenous people of this land. Literally, you are walking on Native American land. It's all occupied now by Tucson residents, but this land was indigenous. Hold on, Sergio, back there. Um, all of this space here is Native American, um, indigenous land. So you know that. In 2012, I got in a life-changing car accident. I got T-bone on golf links and cold. I was on my way to help go have dinner with some friends, but all on me. I had the money at the time. So I was driving, woo, happy on my way. This is some, some Kendrick Lamar, you know what I mean? Good kid, bad city, you know, all that. Boom, some kid hit me. He was texting and driving, T-bone me, okay? Changed my life completely. I was a caregiver in the morning. I had a full scholarship to the, two, uh, to the University of Arizona and the College of Fine Arts, and I worked hard to get there. I was at Pima for years. I was a professional student. Uh, I was teaching at Pueblo Gardens after school, middle school, and I had just took down a demotion. Oh, you remember me? Yeah, you know what's up. Cool. Um, so I had just taken a demotion from Old Navy as well. So now, I lost everything, right? I hit rock bottom. I ended up in a dope house on drugs, messing around with whoever, whenever, just because I needed that love and I needed that validation. And I was like talking to God right in front of the sunset for like days on end. And was like, creator, God, what's up? Like, I worked so hard to get to the U and it just all swept away. And one just boom, T-boned me because I couldn't stay out my car to go to work. And then because I was suffering from injuries, I couldn't go to school, so I lost my scholarship. And to top it all off, because I'm from the hood, you think that getting with someone that you're, uh, that's in prison is cool because you're a ride or die chick. Mind you, I am a ride or die, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't have to spend my time with this person and he, when he came home, two weeks before the semester, he broke up with me. He just wanted to run him up. He just got out of prison, you know what I mean? But I held him down, like straight up. Money, conversation, making sure he knew he was worthy all day, every day. Mind you, the worthy message wasn't born yet, okay? I stayed in front of that sunset day in, day in, I was asking God, what's up? He's like, you're still worthy. She or he, the universe, you still have worth. And I was like, come again, what? I still have worth and I don't have money and I don't look good and I don't look like Kim and I don't have money like Gucci, like none of this stuff and I still worthy, I still have worth, like I'm still valuable? And Creator was like, yeah. You mean like me going to college and me having a paid off car and me having three jobs doesn't make me worthy? Well, it makes you, you know, successful. But you are inherently born with worth. Your existence is proof. Come here, sir. Your existence is proof that you are worthy. And I was like, what? My existence, the way I look, just who I am and how I'm fashioned, so differently, unique, and profound? Yep. And I was like, okay. So I started to uh, I started um, a t-shirt line. And it's called Hashtag Worthy Project. And then it started into a movement. And this is where I invite you all to be a part of that movement. The project aspect of it is what we do is we like to take shirts that are repurposed. We're getting repurposed shirts like if you got them from the thrift store or they're donated or if you turn them inside out. <coughs> However you can use an article of clothing again and repurpose it with work is our whole mission. So instead of like saying, hey, I'm gonna create something brand new, I'm gonna restore work into something that has been tossed away or felt unworthy or you just think, oh, whatever, it's just an old ass shirt, you know what I'm saying? So 
I'm like, no, I'm gonna create something that where people understand that we are worthy and we can restore worth back into our communities and into our world. How many of y'all in here believe like the future is grim? Like honestly, raise your hand. Like you feel like the future is like, Okay, raise your hand, now it's cool. How many of you feel like you have a bright future and like you are the future that you want to see? Good, okay, okay, okay. We got some empowered folks in here. We got some people that see the world. How many are right? You don't have to raise your hand, hold on, hold on. You don't have to raise your hand or admit to it, but I like to think about depression. I struggled with depression because I didn't feel worthy. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places, getting involved with a lot of men, even females that I just, Hey, I want you to make me feel happy. I want you to make me feel worthy. Truth is, I have mom issues. You know what I mean? My mom wasn't emotionally available for me. Truth is, I have father issues. My father was absent from the home. So therefore, I was looking for worth in all the wrong places and to be validated. I didn't have any brothers or sisters, so I thought I had no support system. So suicide was always a thought for me. I'm like, why am I here? What's the purpose? Why, why do I even care? Like, honestly, why do I care? I started to realize my own worth and my own value that I had. We want people to love us and validate us and make us feel special. How many of y'all make yourself feel special? Okay, awesome. How many of y'all do self-care where you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, Shh, I'm looking good today. Yeah, that's yeah, that's self-care. That's, how many of y'all believe in self-love, right? What are some examples of self-love? Honestly, raise your hand if you got one. In the back. Doing something to make yourself smile instead of others. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Back. Say that again. Doing something to make yourself smile instead of others. Beautiful. And what did you say? <laughs> yeah, you. Hey, you got you. Anything else anyone wants to say about self-love? <laughs> like, maybe, like, instead of um, waiting for somebody else to give you a compliment, you'll compliment yourself. Right, 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 right. And I'm not talking about the ego. I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm talking about you, yourself, to say, I love myself enough to get myself out of a situation that maybe ain't good for me. You love yourself enough to say, no, I'm not gonna do dope, I'm not gonna do coke, or I'm not gonna get high, because I know that my education in my mind is better than that. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and say that I'm not struggling with these same things. What I'm, sitting, what I'm standing here to do is to help empower you to have that change for yourself. Because I know when I was at your age, I was like hoping that a set, like a, somebody would just come and talk to me because I was feeling crazy. I was feeling like nobody cared. I was feeling like the future is effed. And I was feeling like, where's my purpose in life? Like I'm just surviving, yo. Like I'm just trying to survive the next moment in life because my dad was beating my mom and there's an overdose down the street and I witnessed my friend get shot at Desert View. Okay, so like I know what it's like to feel like your whole environment around you may make you feel unworthy. How many of y'all in here really believe that you're worthy? Like you know that you're worth something, that you have great value. Raise your hand, truthfully, honestly. Not just because you're wearing a shirt, right? But because you have it down in your core and in your spirit and in your soul that you know that you know that you have value, that you have worth. It ain't about who tells you, it's about you knowing it for yourself deep inside. So if, if I told you all that, what do you, what do you take from that? What does that mean to you? I'm, or am I just standing up here just saying words? What is, what is, when someone tells you you're worthy, what do you say to that? Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you're not just nobody. Right, yeah. you have worth. Like you imagine going up to somebody and be like, look, I don't know what you've been through, but you have great value and worth. I don't know you, and I don't need to. I'm gonna tell you that you do. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's the offer, right, the offer. But I know he's gonna go home at night and he's gonna be like, oh, maybe, you don't think about it, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you know you have value and true work? Okay, so we all know that we do, right? How many of y'all are practicing a lifestyle of it though? What do you mean, like, practicing a lifestyle? What do I mean, practicing a lifestyle? That's a great question. What do you think that means? Um, to prove to yourself that you're worthy. To who, though? Who are you going to prove your worth to? Yourself. Yes. What's your question? What's... Well, I was going to say, like, the way that you can, like, practice it is, like, like trying like different ways on like how to like use like your self love and everything. Okay. And, like maybe like write down like the stuff that you can do that you think nobody else can. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the back? Spreading love to others. Okay. Telling others that they're worthy. 
okay? A lifestyle of worthiness. Anyone else? What does that look like or what does that seem like to you? Like doing what you love every day. What makes you happy, right? Going towards goals. Yeah, what makes you happy? Does everyone in here know what makes you happy? Absolutely. Yeah, what makes you happy? Other things, and then you watch your family movement. What's that? And watch your family movement. Okay, yeah, family definitely makes me happy. So, how many of y'all believe in living a lifestyle of worthiness? Like, as in, okay, I'm gonna try this out and see if it's worth it or not. Or, if you know your worth, you're gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna go in this direction because I know I'm worth it. You see the difference? So, my life consisted of like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to um, down the street and go chill with the homies at the trap house because I grew up in a trap house. That's me over there just being like, cool, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm worthy, yeah, sure, I know I'm worthy, I have worth, yeah, I'm valuable, yeah, sure, but let's just kick it right here, let's play some video games, just kick it all day. TBD, open up! Like, that was my life, right? Okay, so I was just like living and experiencing and being in that moment. Now that I understand consciously to empower myself of a lifestyle where I'm going to be like, I'm going to go to the library, yo. I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to go play basketball. I'm going to be able to write a book or a novel. I'm going to go and tell some youth that they're worthy because someone knows that they're struggling in here with their self-worth. I don't know who it is. It might just be me. But because you can be empowered to know your self-worth today by telling yourself every day that you're worth more than what society makes you think, you're worth more what your parents make you believe, especially if your parents are effed up like mine, where my mom didn't have a lot of love, so she didn't have a lot of love to give. And my father was an alcoholic rolling stone, so he wasn't around. So when you grow up into this world, you need that. There's nothing wrong with love and having dignity and respect added into your life. There's nothing wrong with that. We feel we're unworthy of that. Why? Because people didn't show up, because people weren't available. But I'm here to tell you that you can be your own rescuer. You can be your own saint. You can be your own source of consciousness and source of love. Your own source of self-respect and self-dignity. So all that I do is go into schools and go into communities where we struggle. And I say we because I'm always going to struggle with making sure that I know what I'm worth. Because every day is a new day. And every day someone's going to have an opinion about me that I don't care about. But sometimes I might let it sink in. But you know what, at the end of the day, despite everything and anything, I'm worthy. You're worthy, and we're worthy. We're worthy of love, that's for sure. We're worthy of, of truth. We're worthy of peace. We're worthy of respect. We're worthy of dignity. Everyone in here, I don't know if you ever dealt with bullying, but why are we bullied? Why do people bully? Like, real? what's the real reason why people bully? But someone I haven't heard from yet. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Hurt people, hurt people. That bully is probably getting beat up at home or sexually violated, period. Straight up. Not even going to bullshit you because I was one of those people. I thought bullying someone else is going to make me feel better because I didn't understand that it's a power trip, that I wanted the power to be able to feel like I'm worth something, so I wanted to rob it from somebody else. You have something? I used to know a kid a long time ago, really young, we used to bully kids, but when the police and I lived down the street from him, and the police went to his house one day, and I found out that his parents were physically abusing each other and physically abusing him. He came right. to school with scratches all over his face and big bruises all over his face, and it was just really icky. You think that person's gonna grow up feeling worthy? Um, like first, no, no, right? So you all have your own Vietnam stories. You all have your war stories. You all have your drama and your tribulations and the stuff that you go home to behind closed doors. And that's what I'm trying to talk to you. Those people that are in their rooms late at night with the darkness all around them and they feel hopeless as heck and dope and drugs is their only future. I wanna reach out and I wanna grab you out of that place and tell you you're worth more than that, period. Why do you think women nowadays, and I'm not judging nobody, don't get me twisted, but why do you think women nowadays are willing to show everything and bear it all off just for a few likes? They feel worthless, why else? It's deeper than that though. Why else? They've never been told that they're worth it. Okay, what else? It's deeper, it's deeper. Attention. Right here. Attention. Okay, you're getting to it. It's deeper than that. Attention from where? Why? Why do we want this attention? Because they, they don't feel it. They probably like didn't get like the love it. that they like needed from the past. They didn't get it, it makes you feel good, right? 
makes you feel good, right? The attention makes you feel good, right? You're worthy. That's the attention that you want. You want worthy attention. Truth be told, if you break it down, women will do whatever it takes to fill the void of missing out on a father's love. And I'm not judging no woman. She want to shake it and show it off and she's fine and whatever, let her do her thing. But don't get it twisted. We're all looking to feel worthy and validated in this life. And there's so many of us, and so of course we're gonna feel like just a little person in this big ass world. You know what I'm saying? But your individual worth is what makes the human experience beautiful. And to be able to get it to your highest potential is what I'm trying to do to bring out in all of you all and not settle for anything less. How many of you feel like you struggle with telling yourself good thoughts or like having good thoughts in your mind? How many of you struggle with that, for real? I beat myself up every day, I be calling myself a bitch. Like, bitch, why are you tripping? I'm like, damn, like, why do I call myself a bitch for? Like, you beautiful, beautiful woman, worthy woman, it's okay. Get up, we're learning today, it's okay. You beautiful man, it's okay. Get up, or we're either come in or shut the door, please. Thank you. Welcome, worthy person. <clears throat> so, does that make sense? Am I, am I like, am I talking to y'all? Is that cool? Is that, do you have any questions? What's your thoughts on this? Do you, th- do you think I could go to a lot of other schools and it'd be like cool with other youth? Because I'm trying to do this all over the world. You imagine like thousands and thousands of people being able to just tell you, hey, you're worthy. You know what I'm saying? Look at that smile. When I tell people <laughs> that they're worthy, there's nothing like that. And it's not me telling you that you're worthy. It's me activating the worthiness that's already in you to come out. Because a lot of us will try to be with something that we're not. And I don't need y'all to raise your hand, but I guarantee you that some of y'all are trying to be something you're not. And that's okay, it's because we want to fit in. We move in packs, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, um, we're people that like to congregate and get together with people and like have, you know, a, 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 what is it called, like a gang, you know what I'm saying? Like people around us to support us, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? They make you feel good, right? All right, any questions? Questions, thoughts? So my goal as a worthy message in the movement is to be a modern, who, wait, first of all, who knows who Dr. Martin Luther King is? Okay, what's one thing you can tell me about Dr. King? He had a dream. Anything else? What else? He believed in equality, like, maybe. Equality? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm bringing white and black together. Yeah, that's what's up. Sit back. I'm, I'm, you right there, right there. Oh, mm-hmm. um, that um, he was killed for what he was standing for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Activist. Activist. Sir Jones? What were you going to say? Oh, never mind. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, these are all true. Dr. Martin Luther King was a powerful, motivational, inspirational speaker. And he was a black man that used non-violence. Think about that. Everybody want to get down with violence today. Nobody has a problem doing it at that. We all know how to defend ourselves and get down with the get down, right? I'm from the South. So I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm from the South and I'm a gangster. What I'm telling you is that if shit goes down, I'm going to be there. You know what I mean? And I'm going I'm to square up if that needs to be. But I'm not practicing violence. What I'm trying to do is practice peace, coming from a very violent background. So my thought is with Dr. Martin Luther King, as me and Naila, the youth coordinator back there, we teach nonviolence and how to deal with internal conflict and deal with ourselves. Because we all have issues with our mother and fathers. We all have issues with society. We all have issues with ourselves and how to deal with our feelings, okay? How many of you all in here can identify every feeling that you feel? The other day I was driving, I was like, I don't know what this feeling is, but I don't like it. And I was trying to figure it out. And it was guilt. It ended up being guilt. I was feeling guilty about some stuff. And then so after that, I was like, damn, I got to forgive myself. So I started saying, man, it's okay. You forgive yourself. You learn. You live and you learn. And then you learn to live. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you, self. Thank you, man. Because I've been hurting. I've been telling myself all kinds of bad stuff. Like, I'm a mess up. I'm a piece of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, Dr. Martin Luther King, that's my goal, is to be a Dr. Martin Luther King of my generation, and to be able to give back some hope, to give back some prosperity, to give back some um, provision, to give back some hope, straight up, just hope, and not have for any of us to feel hopeless at all. How many of you know who um, existentialists XXX. Oh. Yeah. 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 You know how many people feel themselves?